The other week, the Disney Eats Instagram page shared this mini wreath donut that you can get out at Disneyland. I think it's sold at California Adventure. And as soon as I saw that, I was just kind of like struck by a lightning bolt of like crafting creativity. And I knew that I had to turn them into Minnie Mouse ears. For my birthday last month, my boyfriend got me a sewing machine. And so I learned how to make donut mouse ears. I actually make sweets and kind of dessert inspired mouse ears on Etsy, which I always have linked in the description. So basically in this video, I wanted to share the whole process of how I made these ears. So this is like what I'm branding as a DIY video because I'm kind of showing you the whole steps and you can use this as a DIY, but it's not really designed as something to kind of be easy and practical. I just thought it'd be something that would be really fun to share. I definitely think it's interesting kind of seeing the crafting and creating process that people go through. So hopefully that's also interesting to see with these. And there's definitely a lot of steps that you can take to kind of simplify this, where if you don't have a sewing machine, you can definitely hand sew it. There are also other tutorials out there that show you how to make just hot glue, stick them together donut mouse ears. And I just wanted to share the whole process of creating these. So without further ado, I'm gonna go over how exactly I made these. I have this super soft fleece fabric that I'm using. And then I'm going to start off with outlining my circles for my template. So I'm using here an 11 centimeter diameter circle for my ear that I'm going to stitch around. And now I need to mark this center so I can figure out where I want to put the donut hole. So I'm marking it there with my pen and I'm making a two and a half centimeter diameter hole tracing around there. Now what I need to do is I need to mark where to stitch. So I have this smaller ear template, 10 centimeters diameter with a uh, arc at the bottom. And so I'm just marking where I'm going to leave open so that I can stuff to create the ear. I drew out my other ear and now I'm just gonna use some pins to pin them together. And then I'm just gonna roughly cut them out. So starting with my sewing machine, I'm sewing around the inner circle. And so since I'm using my sewing machine, I'm doing this in a few small segments. So I'm sewing a bit, stopping, and then moving the fabric around. But you can very easily just do this and hand stitch, and you're just gonna stitch around the whole inner circle. So right now I'm just quickly removing the pins that I had in there. And then next you're gonna wanna cut out the inner circle. So I just folded it in half to create a little slice through. And then I'm just going around. And then because I have all this extra fabric, I'm giving it a trim around the edge, but leaving enough so that I can actually stitch. Now I'm turning my donut so that it is right side out. Kind of have to funnel it through the center. And you can see it's kind of looking like a donut. So next, I need to create some markings that I can use for stitching. So I'm flipping it so my markings are on the bottom, and then I need to mark on opposite sides so that I can match things up. So I'm just gonna make marks opposite of where I have my marks on the inside. And then in addition to that, I'm also gonna make some marks on the outside, but I'm making sure that these marks are going to be in the area that I'm not sewing so that you won't end up seeing them. So this is the trickiest part. You have to roll it into a half burrito in order to sew. So I'm rolling up half of it, and then you flip over one side. And this is where you use the markings you made to kind of line things up correctly. 
So you just need to line everything up and then I'm just going to pin along this whole half. So it almost looks kind of like a fortune cookie or a croissant right now. But you basically have to do this little burrito method and only sew one half at a time so that you can actually have a workable donut. So with my sewing machine, I'm now just going to sew along where my line is drawn along this half kind of crescent. So once I reach that end, I'm gonna make sure my needle is holding down in there, and then I'm gonna take out the pins that I had put in. And now you need to pull through the rest of your fabric. So you're kind of pulling out the insides of your burrito, and then you're going to pin together and sew the other half. And so this is where it's also gonna be helpful to have your markings to match up on the other side to make sure everything kind of stays nice and even and smooth. So everything is finally looking nice and even and pinned and I can continue sewing the rest of this up. All right, so now I can take all of the pins that I had in there out and then I'm also gonna trim a little bit of the excess And now you get to turn it right sides out. So this is where you can kind of see the magic really happen. And then voila, it actually is a full totally sewn donut. All right, so then I sewed up my other donuts, so I have two of them here, and now I can work on cutting out the inner support for the ear. So I'm using my 10 centimeter diameter ear template, again, with an arc at the bottom to, to match the headband. And I'm cutting this out into kind of like a medium thick foam. This allows some support and stability in the ears. It's much better than cardboard, because cardboard obviously will disintegrate if it gets wet. So I'm kind of cutting inside the lines because my fabric is a little extra thick and I wanna make sure there's room. So what I also need to make sure I do is I have to cut out the center hole for the donut. So I'm just kind of roughly marking that and again with my circle template, I'm going around and tracing my donut hole. And then I'm just gonna use my scissors to kind of punch through and then also cut out that center. And then I also have to cut this line in the bottom so that I'll actually be able to feed it through the ears. So I just cut out my second foam ear and now I can work on kind of stuffing it inside of my sewn ears. So now that has given the ear a little bit more body and stability, and then I'm going to move on to stuffing it with some fiber fill. So with this fiber fill, I'm just kind of working on evenly stuffing it as I can. So I'm rotating between which sides I stuff, and then if things kind of get stuck or need to be moved, I'm just using a pen to make sure everything fits in there nice and evenly. All right, so now my donut is all nicely stuffed. 
and the other one is also done, so I can now sew up the bottom of the donuts to get ready to attach them. So I'm gonna make sure that the bottom is nice and prepped and smooth, and I'm folding under the side that has the, my lines drawn on it. I'm threading a needle through, and then I'm going to fold over the other side, tucking it in. And then I'm just going to hand stitch along this whole way, and I'm gonna stitch along this twice. So you can see I'm just sewing this all closed together shut and I don't have to worry about stitches showing because this is going to be underneath where it'll be attached to the headband. And then I'm just tying off my thread. And then like magic, I also have my second donut all sewn and ready. And then we can move on to putting the headband together. So I'm using this really nice soft chocolate brown minky fabric for the headband. And I made myself a headband template. So it's just an extra half inch wider than my headband is. And then I'm just pinning it down and then cutting it out. So my headband is a one inch wide plastic headband and I ordered them in bulk from AliExpress and what I do is I cover them in double sided tape so that it's a lot easier to cover it in fabric. If you don't need to purchase headbands in bulk, Joanne does sell them singularly. So since I have that double sided tape on, I can super easily just kind of roll it right onto the fabric and it's gonna make it super easy to cover. Now with my low temp glue gun, I'm just going to fold all of the edges in and glue everything down securely. Once that's all covered, I'm now going to use some black Chinese braid trim to line the middle of the headband on the inside. So I'm just folding down the edge so that it won't fray. And then I'm again just using hot glue to carefully glue it down in the center. I'm gonna cut off the edge and again fold down that other end so it doesn't fray. So now our headband is all covered and now we get to measure out and mark where our ears go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm measuring and I want to find the midpoint of the headband. So I'm marking down the midpoint because that is where we are going to glue down our bow and then I'm measuring four centimeters down on either side, and that's where I'm going to attach the ears. So the ears will be eight centimeters apart from each other, and this is what's gonna give it the good mouse ear look. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to hand sew the ears onto the headband. So this works because I'm using a nice soft fleece for the ears, and I'm using that really nice soft minky fabric for the headband. So I'm just going to rotate between stitching in the ear and then stitching in the headband. And with this, I definitely cut too long of a piece of thread, so it was a bit of a struggle.
but this is actually quite easy to do and it actually comes out looking totally seamless and this is a much better way than just hot gluing it onto the headband although if you're not really feeling all this sewing you can definitely make this step easier by just hot gluing it on but this is going to make it extremely durable sturdy and well made so I'm just going to continue stitching all the way around and then working my way also to the front and then I'm going to go around and stitch the whole way around twice since one time kind of holds it in place pretty decently but that second time around is really going to secure it in place and then I'm just going to tie off and then I kind of hide the thread by pushing the needle through and then cutting off and so now you have one fully beautiful attached ear Thanks to some magic, now both of them are nice sewn on and attached. So it's now time to work on the decoration accents and I'm going to make my own faux crushed candy cane bits. So I'm using Crayola Model Magic here and if you've seen my DIY lollipop ear tutorial, I'm essentially doing the same thing here but in a candy cane pattern. So I'm making a kind of layer of my clay in the pattern that I want. So I'm going for kind of a very standard candy cane pattern. So I'm going to make an inner log of clay and I'm now going to wrap my pattern around it. And I just kind of work it until it about matches up nicely. And then so now I can just kind of start rolling it out and then forming them into kind of candy canes. I don't need the candy cane shape. I at least just need the candy cane pattern and maybe a little bit of swirl. So I'm just rolling it out thinly and then twisting it and then I'm just gonna set it off to the side and these take quite a while to dry so these really take probably a minimum of two days to really fully nicely dry. So now while those are gonna be chilling there drying, I'm going to work on marking out on my ear where I want my fabric paint to kind of look like the glaze. So I'm just using a washable marker and going around so I know where I want. So now I'm going to use a green fabric paint and then make that the frosting on the ear. So first, wherever I marked, I'm going to kind of fill the border. This is kind of like if you were royal icing a cookie, I'm kind of filling in the edges. And then I'm going to flood the center and I'm using a popsicle stick to spread out the fabric paint since you want to make it a pretty nice thick layer. going to do it the exact same with the other ear. Now that has to dry and it's probably going to take close to a half a day or at least quite a good number of hours, but once it is finally dried, then you want to add a second coat of fabric paint over everything. So usually you can never really get away with just one coat of fabric paint and so this is going to give it a really nice kind of glazed donut finish. I'm next going to take some loose green glitter while the fabric paint is still wet and then sprinkle it over so that it looks like the green sanding sugar that's on the actual donuts. It's also going to add some nice extra bit of sparkle and shine. 
Now this again has to sit and dry. But now once it's dried, I'm gonna take some fabric fusion and water it down quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna paint that over so that I can be sure that all of that glitter is gonna stay securely in place. And then once again, you gotta sit and wait for it to dry. But in the meantime, my candy canes have dried out, so now I can crumble them into the kind of little crushed candy cane bits. So Crayola Model Magic is nice because it's super lightweight and it can also tear very easily when it's not coated. So I'm just gonna break everything up into little candy cane bits. So that it can look a bit more like actual candy canes, I'm taking Crayola Model Magic Glaze and I'm going to kind of toss and coat it so that they look like actual pieces of crushed candy canes. And this is also going to help protect the pieces of clay. Once those guys have dried, I'm going to take some E6000 and use that to adhere my broken fake candy cane bits along the edge of the donut. My phone ran out of storage for filming, but after I glued the candy cane bits on, I then went back with some Crayola Model Magic Glaze to coat everything for a little bit of extra shine and protection. Then I have these red pom-poms that I'm going to again glue on with E6000, and that's going to look like kind of the red M&Ms or candy bits. With these, they could also kind of look like berries on the ears, and I'm putting them on the bottom corner and arranging them so that they look a little bit like a hidden Mickey. Just to add a little pizzazz, I'm going to paint the pom-poms with some red glitter glue so that they're extra shiny and sparkly. The final component is making the bow, and I'm going to do this entirely no sew. So I'm just going to hem down the top of the fabric twice so that it's a nice finished edge. And then I'm measuring how long I want my bow. So I've worked this out to the size that I like. And then I'm gonna cut that out. And then on the other side, I'm also going to hem and glue it down. I still have to figure out which method I like best doing sewn bows since I now have the sewing machine, but this no sew method is what I've used previously and I like how the bows look. I'm measuring the inside of the bow because I'm going to line it with some felt since I like my bows to have a little bit more body to them. So I'm then going to trim this piece of felt to the length that I want. And then I'm going to hem the outer edge of the bow fabric and I'm going to glue down the felt on the inside. I'm cutting down to the size that I need, and then I'm just going to hem down the other edge. Now we actually get to turn it into the bow, so you're going to fold both edges in half, make sure there's an even amount on either side, and you're just going to glue that down. Now we're going to accordion fold it so that you can actually get a bow form. When you're happy how it looks, you can then take hot glue and then put it in the creases to hold the bow shape. You then need to make the middle part of the bow, and so this is the extra bit of fabric.
So I'm working it out to the width that I want and then I'm just again kind of hemming things with my hot glue. And then I can just attach this on to the center of the bow and wrap it around. And then now you have your cute little bow. So the very last step is just to attach the bow to the headband and I'm keeping it super simple. I'm now using my high temperature hot glue gun. I'm putting a little bit of glue where I marked the center of my headband and then firmly pressing the bow on. And ta-da! Then the ears are all finished. They're definitely a labor of love to make, but I think they look absolutely delicious. I hope you enjoyed this DIY of how I made these ears, and thanks for watching!